the big news reveal of yesterday was that Codemasters have purchased Slightly Mad Studios for £30 million. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the ins and outs of that deal, what it could mean for us sim races, and whether it's good or bad in the long run. Quite a bit to get through, so let's get started. What's going on guys, my name is Matinio and in today's video we are going to be talking about, or I'm going to be talking about, the recent and fairly big news that Codemasters, the guys behind things such as the recent Formula 1 games and Dirt Rally and Grid, have agreed to purchase, or have purchased, Slightly Mad Studios, the people behind Project Cars and Project Cars 2, um, for £30 million. This came out of nowhere. I'd heard nothing, there'd been nothing teased. Bear in mind it would probably fall into the realms of sort of financial prospecting and stuff like that. Uh, in terms of touted deals and, you know, men in suits with briefcases and fancy cars going and talking in, you know, high-rise offices about fiscal responsibility and so on and so forth. But, yeah, we, we, know, uh, we know that Nathan Bell had been teasing something. Whether this was it, I don't know. My assumption would it be that it was either to do with Project Cars 3 or potentially, and this was news from a while ago, that they were working on some sort of Fast and the Furious game. So whether what Nathan Bell was teasing was this or whether it is something that's still to be revealed, we don't know. Or whether this deal will affect that, that, that which he was teasing, whether you know things like Project Cars 3 or this Fast and the Furious game are actually now going to happen at all. So. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the good and the bad that could potentially come from this deal just from a gamer's perspective. The fiscal side of it I could give a monkeys about because it's not going to affect me really, is it? Now, we're going to start, well, I'm going to talk about the fiscal side first of all. I just said that I wouldn't, but I am. £30 million doesn't seem like a whole lot of money for me. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like a whole lot of money. I've seen mediocre players go to even more mediocre clubs for more money than that. But again, it depends on it depends on the circumstances of the deal and what Codemasters are getting from it, I suppose. But 30 million doesn't seem like a whole lot of money. But in terms of the good and bad, so we'll start off with the good side of things and what we could potentially see going forward. So firstly, we we could see an improvement in the next Formula One and Dirt games. Now, the Dirt and the Formula One games have only recently come out. The Dirt game, the third one, if there is going to be a third one, could be a little ways away. The last one, I think there was a gap of about three and a half years or so, maybe a little longer, between the two games being released. But could it potentially be something for uh, for Dirt 5? Potentially. We know we've got the Dirt Rally and we've got Dirt, and Dirt is sort of the. Um, the more arcadey side, the more accessible side for new guys and, and, you know, novice racers, whereas Dirt Rally is the hardcore side. Whether there's a new Dirt in the works and some of the guys from Slightly Mad Studios are going to be working on that, um, we don't know potentially. Whether the guys from Slightly Mad Studios are going to be working on the new F1 2020 game, that might be a bit of an ask. They probably would be fairly... It'll be a decent way along in terms of development now. How much they can come and contribute at this point, I don't know. Whether... Again, it depends on the release schedule because we we don't really know. We, the last Formula 1 game came out quite early. It came out in June time, I think it was, around about the time of the French Grand Prix. Whereas we'd been used to them coming out sort of late August, early September sort of time, sort of back end of the season. So whether they're going to keep it in that sort of um, June, July time slot or whether they're going to move it further back to sort of bring it in line, get it closer to the start of the, the F1 season, uh, we don't know. So if they are bringing it closer, again, it depends there might not be enough time for any guys from uh, Slightly Mad Studios to make any sort of meaningful contributions or lasting contributions. It may be a case that they look to um, F1 2021, the big uh, regulations update year um, for Formula 1, for the next line of Formula 1 games. That might be where we start to see stuff coming in from there. But in my opinion, if the next Formula 1 game could look, have a weather system like, and have force feedback and physics along the lines of a Project Cars 2, 
that would be excellent for Formula One. The career mode side, the Codemasters, they've done a really good job. They could be doing better. There could be more they could be doing, and hopefully they will do it. They'll integrate the F2 and the Formula One campaigns into one, uh, rather than having some stupid little gimmicky mode where you basically have Devin Douchebag Butler and and the, you know your, your sympathetic teammate and you race partly, you know, a part of three races or whatever. Hopefully it'll, they'll sort that out. But the other side of it, I think, again, some people will probably say, well, no, because they'll probably make it a bit too sim intensive and it will it won't appeal to the mass market. But from what I've been hearing, while I've never used it myself, Project Cars 2 is pretty good on a controller. It was a lot better than the first game. It was a lot more accessible. So I think there's a the potential for that to happen. Whether it does, I don't know. We don't really know the, the terms of this deal, who's going where, what's happening. Maybe all the Slightly Man Studio stuff are just getting their marching papers. Just say, sorry, we're... We have all the staff we need. We purchased Slightly Mad Studios for different reasons. It wasn't to bring the staff over. So here's your redundancy package. See you later. Turn your key card at the door. There is a potential, and that's on the bad side. But, I mean, further things on the bad side, I suppose you could say, if we're going to go on that side now, no Project Cars 3. That would be a travesty, in my opinion. It really would. Because I love the Project Cars games, mainly because the, both the first and the second Project Cars games have been huge for me and my channel. I think the top five videos on my channel in terms of views are either Project Cars or Project Cars 2. And when I first started out doing YouTube, I was doing general gaming and I was used to getting, you know, 20, 30, 40 views a video. Then one day, I just happened to wake up extremely early found there was DLC for Project Cars, the first Project Cars game. I did videos on it, and that video went and did 10,000 views. I didn't even got close to anything like that before. So that was absolutely amazing, and that really kicked on the channel, and it sort of gave me an idea of the direction I should go in, and I eventually did move on to sort of full-time sim racing and racing game content at the, uh, the you know, back end of 2017. But, yeah, um, so it'll be a travesty if we don't get a Project Cars 3, because I think there is a... I wouldn't say there's a lot that could come from Codemasters. My big hope would be that potentially Codemasters have the contacts to maybe get some classic Formula One content in the next Project Cars game. We've got some Lotuses and they're great, don't get me wrong, they are great that we've got some classic Formula Cars, but I'd love to see some classic Ferraris, classic McLarens, some Williams, Six Wheel Tyrrell, the Brabham fan, the fan car. I would love to see these things in a Project Cars game. and. Like I said, if the guys who worked on the, the force feedback, um, if the next F1 game could be resemble sort of Project Cars 2.5, but purely Formula 1 content and licensing and so on, that would be perfect. In my opinion, that would be perfect. Another thing they could potentially do with the Slightly Man Studios guys, if they are to stay on and continue working on sort of Codemasters IPs, is send some of the guys from the physics and force feedback side to the dirt rally guys and ask them to fix the tarmac physics i love dirt rally don't get me wrong loose surfaces uh, low grip surfaces like gravel mud dirt snow ice and so on that's fantastic there's no it has no equal in that department in my opinion but the tarmac side is just not that good you don't feel connected to the road you feel like you're floating above it it's like aquaplaning but with a bit more grip for the most part the cars are always just skating around you never feel like they're properly connected to the road you don't know where they are in terms of grip and where the edge of it is and so on and so forth at least in my opinion that's how it feels so a lot of people will say well you are factor and uh, yeah, cars are good with the, 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 the project cars that yeah but Codemasters didn't buy the guys behind Assetto Corsa or R Factor, did they? They bought the guys behind Project Cars. And while Project Cars 2 probably wasn't the best, the absolute outright best in terms of force feedback and physics, I think most of us can agree that it would be a massive improvement if the guy, if we had Project Cars 2 style force feedback physics side, which I enjoyed, in the next project, in the next Formula 1 game. That would be ideal for me, I think. It'd be a bit more real, and we know that they can do it on the controller side as well, which still would appeal to the mass market side, because that's the big thing with Formula 1. It's a huge intellectual property. They want to get it to as many people as possible. If it's too intensive, people won't buy it, because as I found with the recent Call of Duty game, it's just 
when you're not winning you're not really having fun when it's too hard when it's too difficult when it's just grinding you down time after time you can feel no forward progression you just you don't have fun with it and you start getting annoyed and you put a hole in your desk which i did during the beta of call of duty and then i went out and bought the full game surprisingly but that's another story so yeah um so i mean like i said the good thing is that could potentially come from it again we don't really know the full details of the deal and what it will entail and what's going where and how it's going to work we'll probably find out the full you know proof is in the pudding sort of thing when the first proper game with both sides working on something comes to fruition if that's how it's going to work again we don't know what's going to happen to the staff on the Slightly Mad Studio side. We don't know what's going to happen to the IPs. Um, my hope would be that they're just that Slightly Mad Studios will continue to work as they are right now, but they will be under the Codemasters banner. So it might be a case that there would be just different ways of distributing and publishing the games and so on and so forth. Um, but again, it really does depend on how they're going to do it. Um, my hope is that we are going to see a Project Cast 3 game that whatever they were working on with regards to a big sort of hollywood size ip um racing game hopefully that comes to fruition because i'd like to just see it. it's probably not you know play it a little bit maybe just see what it's like but hopefully we see it and we find out what it is but again it's um it's still a little bit of a mystery a as to why they purchased it and b what they intend to do now they have purchased it and i'm sure we'll find out more as time goes on there'll be more sort of press releases and so on with what you know in regards of what's going to happen to the staff what's going to happen to future slightly mad studios ips what's going to happen with future codemasters ones as well um, i mean it's not a merger codemasters have bought them so they own them um so yeah it's has the potential for good and bad i would hopefully all it's just going to be all good um and by all good even if it's just a little bit good but we're going to still get project cars 3 i would hope that that is the case but that's pretty much the end of today's video guys but i'm keen to hear your thoughts so uh, drop a comment down below uh, let me know what you think of this deal do you think it'd be good or bad what would you like to see come from it it's always awesome to hear from you and hear your side of things as well so drop a comment down below uh but yeah like i said end of the video today so um thanks so much for watching uh, if you enjoyed make sure you leave a like and subscribe and if you do subscribe hit that bell notification button as well so you get updates for all of my new videos whenever they go live and uh, like i said drop a comment down below let me know your thoughts on this codemaster slide my studios deal uh, but yeah once again thanks so much for watching stay cool and as always i will catch you in the next video peace